Hi, I'm Dave. Welcome to my investment channel. Today I want to talk about five reasons why Tesla will start to make their own battery cells in 2020. Now again, this is speculation and I'm going to back it up with some of my thoughts and reasons. And I'd love to hear your approach and your thoughts as well in the comment section. The first reason why I think Tesla is going to be making their own cells in 2020 is basically I think they're in a radically different position than they were seven years ago when they started the Reno Gigafactory and they needed a partner in Panasonic. Now Tesla at that time, 2013 or so, they didn't have access to a lot of funds and they needed money. Remember, there was no Model 3 yet and also Tesla lacked you know, the room and the capacity to handle cell manufacturing. And that was such a big part of, you know, the car that they didn't want to touch and rightfully so because they needed to focus on first things first, which is to get the Model 3 out. But now that Tesla is entering 2020 and they have the Model 3 at production, basically 7,000 Model 3s a week right now, headed to probably 10,000 next year. Tesla is in a radically different position right now in 2020. They're in a position of strength where they can handle some risks and they can handle learning something new. And I think um, what this bodes is basically Tesla is wanting to and has the capacity to go into battery cell um, manufacturing. Now, whether this is a wise idea or not, we're gonna talk about that more. But the first point I wanna make is that Tesla's in the right place. Like they have the capacity, they're in the position um, to go into it and launch in it launch it for themselves. Now the second reason why I think Tesla is going to basically make sales in 2020 is Tesla needs to drive down costs. And this is the whole basically mission of Tesla. Tesla's mission is to accelerate you know, the advent of sustainable transport. But the biggest, I guess, driving force of demand right now is cost. And if and Tesla's cars are already amazingly, amazing in performance, it's just the cost is still relatively too high for, a, for the vast majority of people to basically buy a Tesla right now. And because of that, Tesla knows that their biggest problem ahead is they need to drive down costs radically to the point where everyone can afford a Tesla basically, or almost everyone. And um, the way they drive it down is uh, Tesla is ruthless, ruthlessly and aggressively cutting costs and everything. But the thing is, with the battery cells, it's hard for them to cut costs because of Panasonic. Panasonic basically manufactures their cells and they have a contract and Panasonic is basically not in the same basically position or doesn't have the same set of goals as Tesla. And they're not really interested in per se, per se like, you know, driving down costs so much where they're barely, barely making any money. T uh, Panasonic needs to recoup their investment and there's some tension there. And that's why I've always been skeptical of the Panasonic Tesla relationship. I've always thought that that relationship would end in tension because Tesla is a different beast. You know, they're um, wanting to drive down costs probably far greater and far more aggressively than Panasonic is, is comfortable for. And that tension is basically the second reason why I think Tesla is gonna jump ship, is gonna start making sales in 2020. Now the third reason is Tesla needs to push battery technology far greater than what Panasonic can handle or is comfortable for. Um, see, for Tesla to drive down costs, they need to take some risks. And they did that this year earlier by acquiring Maxwell Technologies. I'm gonna be talking about Maxwell a little bit later in this talk, but basically Tesla's entire kind of mission and focus is on driving adoption for electric vehicles. And they are needing to be as aggressive, aggressive as they can in pushing technology and costs down. Now, it's great if the whole industry is as aggressive as Tesla, then Tesla can take a step back and just rely on other people. And this is where I think you know, Tesla is in a difficult situation. I think Tesla would rather not produce their own cells and would rather have a ton of other companies produce, you know, much more cells than anyone needs and drive down the costs um, greater than anyone expects. But I think the deciding factor is the other companies in the industry are not as motivated as Tesla to drive down the cost and advance technology and batteries. And this is where Tesla is at a place where I believe they feel forced in a way where they need to 
make their own cells because no one else is driving down the cost as aggressively as they want it to go. So my fourth point is basically this, Tesla is gonna make cells because they need to implement Maxwell Technologies' secret sauce. Now for Maxwell Technologies, the company they you know, bought last year, they basically found a way to get rid of solvents in the cell manufacturing process. Now, the use of solvents in a cell manufacturing process um, supposedly makes it very complicated and takes a lot more time and um, leads to a lot more errors. And by removing that whole process of solvent, and they, it's basically making a dry electrode um, manufacturing process. By doing that, they're able to save time and errors and ultimately cost for the cells. Add in other improvements that they've made in terms of longevity. And I think what you're gonna see is um, Tesla has already previewed exactly what these new cells are capable of. Basically, they're capable of going a million miles and the costs are gonna be dramatically lower. And I think the Cybertruck basically highlighted all of these facts that Tesla is at least thinks that they can progress and drive down costs so much that the Cybertruck, you know, going basically 500 miles for under $70,000 um, is gonna be possible and a reality um, in a couple years. Um, and lastly, I think Tesla's gonna be forced to basically make their own cells because they need to basically set the, the groundwork for the next decade. You know, I think relying on, you know, Panasonic or these other, you know, LG Chem or other cell makers, um, I think they're always going to be kind of at the mercy of these cell makers and there's always going to be this tension where the cell makers are going to be wanting more margin, more profit. Tesla's going to want to drive down the prices more. Tesla's going to want to push the technology more, but these other companies, you know, don't want to do that. Um, and I think Tesla um, basically is now that Model 3 and Model Y is soon to be ramped next year in 2020, Tesla's finding, finally in a position where they're like, we can take on the risk. We can take on this uh, big additional um, investment in manufacturing. Now this <clears throat> whole thing is gonna take a lot of um, complexity. And um, I think Tesla can handle it. I just don't think it's gonna necessarily be as smooth as it theoretically, you know, maybe is presented. Now here's how I think it's gonna, you know, roll out next year at the battery drivetrain uh, investor day, which is probably going to be, I don't know exactly when, probably, you know, my guess is, you know, March or so of next, of 2020. Tesla's going to basically announce that they're going to make their own cells and they're going to show the advantage of cost and longevity that they have with their new cell technology, how they're going to integrate Maxwell technologies, etc. And um, they're going to show the whole process and they're going to have some lofty goals, you know, and, Tesla's probably gonna float out the figure of 10 to 20 million cars that they need cells for and how no one else can provide that number of cells at the cost that they need. And Tesla is gonna go into it by themselves. Now, the question is, okay, so when are they gonna start manufacturing these cells and what cars are they gonna show up in? And I think um, it's interesting because I think um, the next generation Model S and X will have these new cells. And for sure the Tesla Semi will have these uh, new cells. You know, it has to go a million miles. Um, that's the whole thing they advertise for. So I think um, the first cars are going to be Tesla Semi, Next Gen Model S and X will have these, you know, they all go like 500 miles or, or, or greater. And I think Tesla will start production mid-2020, will start to ramp up by the end of 2020, but I think it's going to take longer than expected to ramp up. And it's going to be a slow ramp, but I think this is basically going to set the, the groundwork and the foundation for basically a decade. Um, because as Tesla owns their own cell manufacturing process, they can be as aggressive and as ruthless as they want to in driving down costs and pushing the envelope with technological advances. And this will translate basically into greater range for their cars at lower cost and ultimately a higher adoption for their vehicles. And I think it's interesting to note that Tesla's whole strategy in all this is a vertical integration. It's like basically they're gonna make their own motors, their own batteries, their own battery packs, their own autonomous software, their own, you know, uh, factories, etc. They own their own stores, own their own service centers, um, uh, superchargers. They're doing the whole thing basically that no other car company is even thinking of right now. And by being that vertically integrated, there's complexity that that brings on, but there's also an advantage if you can manage that complexity and leverage that complexity, where you could basically provide a, a comprehensive type of experience that 
could be potentially better than any others and you could potentially drive down you know costs and produce a better product than anyone else can that's tesla's aim and i think eventually they will get there um, i just don't think it's going to be like a quick you know um, walk in the sand tesla has their work cut out for them next year is model y ramp it's um it's going to be i think a lot easier and quicker than a lot of people think because it's largely the model y 3 but a, just a taller model 3 um, but this getting to cell manufacturing um, it's going to be interesting um, i'm excited for it a little bit trepid um, but it's definitely something that you know every tesla investor needs to be thinking about for next year and it's also going to be shaping i believe the next decade of advancements for Tesla and what possibilities that Tesla has. Now, I just recorded a bunch of videos um, recently. Check out the videos about why I think um, Tesla is going to be added to the S&P 500 this year, five things every uh, Tesla investor needs to know for 2020, why the shorts hate Tesla, and my impressions on the Cybertruck um, after doing a test ride. Anyways, subscribe, add a comment, and we'll talk to you guys later. Checking out.